If you remember Vegeta getting eaten by crocodiles, Piccolo making dinosaurs cry, and Gohan buying records, then you grew up playing Legacy of Goku 2 for the Game Boy Advance. Dragon Ball Z was huge in the early 2000s, and like any big franchise, it spawned a steady stream of tie-in games, and a big chunk of them were released for the Game Boy Advance. I already did a video about the first Legacy of Goku game, a retelling of the first third of the story interspliced with weird and wacky filler like collecting porn magazines, picking flowers, and escorting children, but a year later, Webfoot, the developer behind the first game, would release a sequel. Legacy of Goku 2 covers the Trunks, Android, and Cell sagas, and it's an improvement in every single way. This is evident right from the start. Art. The game opens with the story of Future Trunks losing his master at the hands of the evil androids. This section also works as somewhat of a tutorial. Now compare this with having to collect porn magazines at the start of the first game. The game is also much larger in scope, just look at how much bigger Goku's house is compared to the first game, and you can actually go inside as well. You can also run around in this game, although that does end up with characters smashing into shit quite a lot. The combat feels way more responsive, the bosses have a health bar, and you can also see the amount of damage you've done with every punch. And the death screen is great, look, you just float up to heaven forever. There's also a decent level up system, a proper objectives journal, and a goddamn world map. This is the first world map I remember seeing in a Dragon Ball Z game, and they use the official Toriyama map, this is the same map that you play through in Kakarot. Flying around the map always reminded me of the early Final Fantasy games. Actually, the whole game has a square in the mid-90s vibe about it, except for the leather daddy tigers you've got to fight. The game is also very faithful to the source material. The Z fighters arrive to intercept Frieza, only to see Trunks cut the villain in half. There's even a cool little animation for it. So Goku arrives and Trunks tells him to prepare for the arrival of the evil androids three years in the future. Alright, I guess it's time to train, right? <laughs> Sure, only first Gohan has to find Piccolo in West City, but for some reason Hercule's parade is blocking the way, and Hercule won't move until someone brings him his favourite sandwich. But the guy at the sandwich deli won't make a sandwich until he has his morning newspaper, and the agent won't sell newspapers because the school bus with his kid inside has careened off a cliff. Boy, that escalated quickly. This is all a long-winded way of saying that the random filler from the first game is alive and well here. Alright, so after doing a bunch of elaborate filler quests, we finally meet Piccolo. How's your training going, Gohan? Pretty well, if you count fetching newspapers, sandwiches, and old records as training. And now you can play as Piccolo. That's right. Despite the game being called Legacy of Goku, the developers realized if they wanted to have any kind of coherent story, they'd need to allow you to play as other characters. Otherwise, you'd spend half the game lying there battling a hard condition, and then dying for real at the very end. Okay, back to Piccolo. Nothing to see here, folks, just a seven foot tall green man walking around the city. Look, this random woman just decides to tell Piccolo about her midlife crisis. Lady, you realize I'm the Demon King who tried to take over the world. Twice. Okay, so this time we can finally train for the androids. Uh, no. Apparently there are some dinosaurs terrorizing a village to the west of the city, and Goku wants you to take care of them. <laughs> Look at Piccolo, he's like, the androids are coming, I don't have time for this shit. To me, this is the developers just admitting, yeah, there is too much filler in this game. Look at these bastards. You can't attack them either because of, I don't know, Peter or some shit. So they just end up trampling you to death. Last time on Dragon Ball Z, the Demon King Piccolo got trampled to death by some midget triceratopses. Piccolo then proceeds to find the boss Triceratops and beat the fuck out of him until he literally cries. That's what you get for making me do shitty filler side quests. And then, completely out of nowhere, Kulo appears, and he's like, hey, if you see Goku, let him know I'm looking for him. Okay, bye. Okay, surely now it's time to train for the androids. Nope, because some old man steals Hercule's key to the city, and of course it's up to Piccolo to chase him. Hey, come back! Oh, oh, goddamn wall. This is what I get for mixing with Goku and his friends. And just like that, for no reason whatsoever, Piccolo went back to killing people. Okay, so after all of that, you can finally train for the end of the world. Three years later. That's it? So th they just focused on all of this pointless filler, but not the training itself. And look, Piccolo's only leveled up like one level. I guess he should have beat up more tigers and leather, right? Alright, so the androids attack, and you get to see Vegeta turn Super Saiyan for the first time, and then he beats up 20, and Jero escapes to the mountains, which is behind a wall. Literally. You know what that means? Grinding. And you grind by eradicating the entire wildlife habitat of a nearby forest. Oh, and I stumbled upon this random house. Who, who, who the fuck is this guy? Fever, 
You also have to destroy three generators and the last one has a giant dinosaur nesting there so you have to move the eggs but every time you get hit the egg breaks. It's a side quest inside a fucking side quest and it's impossible. Alright finally Dr. Jaro's lab. Oh shut fucking hell. So more story stuff happens, the three androids are activated, they beat everyone up and Piccolo fuses with Kami. I'm the Namekian who has long since forgotten his name. Eh, it still says Piccolo. And look, Piccolo's new transformation is just him taking off his clothes. Then he arrives at Roshi's Island, no porn magazines around this time. And then he fights the androids while Trunks discovers Cell. The Z fighters then realize shit is really getting out of hand and decide to go into everyone's favorite procrastination fantasy, the hyperbolic time chamber. So after training in there for a year, Vegeta and Trunks come out ready to take on Cell. Not so fast. First, you have to take on these hordes of crocodiles. Oh shit, Jesus Christ, where are they all coming from? Oh shit, 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 look, I've got to turn Super Saiyan just to fight them off. And there's even more of them in the next island, and this time they're joined by some lions as well. What the fuck is that? I'm gonna have to use Big Bang Attack on this bastard. Oh, it worked. So after all that, Vegeta finally encounters Cell, he lets him absorb Android 18, and then him and Trunks both get their asses kicked. Cell then takes over the airways and announces the Cell games in 10 days time. And just like in the anime, Goku decides to find the Dragon Ball so they can wish back all of Cell's victims. Now these things are scattered all over the world map, and this is probably the longest single section of the game because you have to keep on leveling up all of your characters to get through all these barriers. So with the Dragon Balls collected, you can finally fight Cell, and you know how it goes. Gohan gets super pissed, he turns Super Saiyan 2, Goku dies, and then comes back to perform the father-son Kamehameha. And that's the end of the main story mode, but there's a bunch more stuff you can do post-game. Like, remember when you accidentally bumped into Cooler on the street? Well, if you find seven Namekians scattered around the world, you can take them to New Namek, where Cooler is waiting to fight you in a cave. Wait, so all these Namekians are just chilling there while the brother of the guy who blew up their first planet lives in a cave next door. Alright. But my favourite post-game bit is probably the ability to unlock Hercule, or Mr. Satan for all of you purists. As expected, he's incredibly weak, but he has this one special move that allows him to freeze time. And he also runs like a complete idiot. And if you have the patience to grind him all the way up to level 50, you unlock a secret ending where Hercule goes on a late night talk show and boasts about beating Cell. And that was Legacy of Goku 2, a game that builds on the original in every way. Yes, replaying it now, the random filler missions are quite tedious, but I didn't really care about Gohan's newspaper route back in the day, I was just so excited to play an adventure game faithful to my favourite anime, and I was so hyped when I heard they were working on a third game, Boo's Fury, but unfortunately it was never released here in the UK. Hmm, maybe now is a good time to finally play it. I just hope it has more random women coming onto Piccolo in the street. Thank you.